Part two with Seth, Seth McAllister from Maine. We um really good to hear about the about the mini split single head mini split approach. What about the fresh air system? What yeah. um what decision did you proceed with the with the fresh air system, the ERV? Well, um, you know, I I think from the beginning I had kind of um you know, the research that I I had done kind of led me down this this path of the Zender unit. And it's a phenomenal unit. It is an, a, a, it's on the pricier side of uh, ERV. Um, but I lucked out in that a uh, friend of mine now actually uh, installs and commissions Zenders. So it met, met my budget at that point. And so we went the Zender route. Um, and so I'm, that should actually arrive this week or early next week. I'm really excited to, to pick that up. Um, the fresh air machine, you know? So in New Hampshire, did you remember hearing of Zender? Uh, n- no, but I had actually uh, interviewed at a company like 12 years ago in the same industri- industrial park that Zender's located. So I intimately know. In fact, it was probably a 10 minute drive from where we lived prior to moving back to Maine. Oh, wow. Okay. So near that would be near Portsmouth, right? Portsmouth. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hampton, New Hampshire. What were the driving factors for uh, proceeding with it? The passive house community. Um, You you know, it's just, I, yes, I know that there are are other models out there, but everybody that I've spoken with so far in, in the passive house community just can't speak highly enough about Zender. Um, you know, I'd, I'd seen it several months ago from, um, a a particular builder that has a well-known YouTube channel and it's, you know, primarily what he installs, uh, he's down, uh, in, in Texas. Um, and so, you know, initially, uh, a lot of the units weren't frost protected for, for ERVs. And so I was originally pursuing an, an HRV, um, and I had gone to a builder code course probably in May-ish. Uh, and so they were, you know, they were really talking about the efficiencies and uh, how they would prefer an ERV in our geographical location and that Zender's frost protected. So, um, you know, once, once I knew that my friend was willing to install for me it was a no-brainer i couldn't say no what was your experience like with respect to the building permit was it easy as easy as any other type of house from your perspective or were there some any issues with the building department i don't i don't know that it was as easy um but it wasn't terribly difficult Uh, there was there was a significant amount of interest and intrigue uh We've, we've talked about how, you know, passive building is not the, the foremost building technique in the market. And so you run across building inspectors, code enforcement officers that don't have the experience with it. So they absolutely have, have additional questions. Um, the two foremost questions that, that came out of this process were, heating requirements and snow load requirements. Uh, And so it is a slightly different building technique with a sleeper or hat roof. And given our snow loads, there was some concern that they structurally, it wouldn't be sound enough. Um, But the way, you know, you guys work with, um, with that building process is, the trusses are designed locally in state. And so those that trust manufacturer has the structural engineer to permit and sign off on it. And as soon as the code enforcement officer received that stamp, he said, no problem. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Good. Okay. Good. I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. The other issue was just the concern that a single heat source, uh, air source heat pump would be sufficient. 
And ultimately the code enforcement officer, you know, said, Hey, I, I, I disagree with you, uh, but I'm not going to stand in your way. Uh, so I was able to, you know, proceed with, with that, um, in mind. Would you have any recommendation for people engaging in a build to explore one particular type of financing or another, or to engage with um, a mortgage broker versus a a bank or individual financial institution? Do you have Would you have any tips for people on that front? Uh, so we we had a little bit of cash from the sale of our home to get started, which which I think really helped. Um, the concern with with passive building, I think, from a lot of lenders and even from the appraisal industry is that it costs more than what the immediate resale value might be. Um, I think that a lot of those metrics are, they're behind, right? There aren't enough passive houses out there to really um, provide enough comparables. That said, during that process, um, if I'm not mistaken, the customer gets to choose their appraiser. And having gone just gone through the, the process, we did pull out a construction loan to finish the rough in um, stages. We found an appraiser that had experience with passive homes and the appraisal came in above the asking. Um, in fact, it came in quite a bit above what I'd anticipated. So it is, it's clear to me that going through that process, it is extremely helpful to have an appraiser or, or at least work with an entity that understands passive building. If you were talking to, to a bunch of the locals there and were considering building and considering code build versus other, some other types of homes is there any advice you would you would give them with respect to how you made how you made your decision i see the benefits behind passive building uh you know and i and i think a lot of times when you, when i started going down this this path um i had looked at certificate the certification process um and then i got introduced to this concept called pretty good house uh, it's actually a book that a couple of um, a, a, a builder in, in Portland, Maine, his, name's, his name is Dan Colbert, uh, co-wrote with a couple of uh, other individuals. And the premise behind it is get as close as you can to passive. Uh, there are just there are far too many benefits, but it doesn't have to be exactly, you know, uh, certification ready, um, even in retrofit retrofitting a home get as close as you can to passive um it pretty good air tightness insulation uh air exchange you know those are if you can inc in incorporate those aspects into your building you're already further along than any code built home um you know and and you you talked about the the air exchange in a house like even though i'm not in there um, you know, the windows, our windows currently don't have screens on them. I don't know how many people have asked me, are you going to get screens for your windows? And, you know, I stopped and thought about it for a while, but why? <laughs> yes, I can open my window, but at that point, there is no control over the moisture. There's no filtering. Um, my ERV provides that. It's it's even better than just opening <laughs> opening the window. I know exactly the, the air quality that at that point is coming into my home. What would be the major benefits that, uh, that you would signal out to someone to best protect their inf investment building or going the passive route? I think, uh, you know, overall air and air quality efficiency, uh, sound quality, you know, that large of a insulative footprint, quiets your surroundings down quite a bit. Um, you know, you had done some math on the Pine Valley, Pine Valley model for heat requirements with how incredibly crazy energy costs are these days. That's a huge component to why, you know, 
we we pursued uh, passive building for sure. And, um, you know, in our particular area, we've we've struggled with the energy uh, companies. And I think just this year alone, the rates increased almost 100%, um, which is unreal. And so how, how does somebody sustain that in a rural community like Maine um, without retrofitting, without adding passive components to their homes? It's just, it, it's super difficult. So um, I'm, I'm, the more passive houses that we can build, the more we change the environment, um, the more we change the building trade industry, um, you know, sus- we could become even more sustainable. Uh, and that's the, the snowball effect, right? It's you've got to start somewhere and hopefully together we can um, make a larger impact. I love it.